Hello and welcome back to Bee Monster Laboratory. Today is uh, going to be lesson three in the starter kit for the Elegoo Mega 2560 project. Uh, lesson three is about the LED. We're going to talk about how to change the brightness of an LED using different values of resistor. We're going to talk about breadboards and resistors. So it's going to be a lot of fun. I hope you'll join us. This is all very basic information, but very important information and very useful information if you're going to continue using and following the projects in the Mega 2560 project. In this lesson there is a brief introduction to the components that are used and the first introduction would be the introduction of the breadboard. The breadboard is used uh, for quick prototyping because it's just you plug the components in and uh, there's no need to solder. So if you were to crack this breadboard open you would see strips of metal that connect each hole electrically you would see these short rows right here of five are all connected by one strip of metal as well as this row all the way down to the end of the bread the other side of the breadboard and this section is separate from this section by a deep channel that runs in between that shows that there's a break in the connection so the positive pin of each of these two components is plugged into the same row there therefore they are connected electrically on the outside you have rails, you have positive and ground rails, there are also some people also call them uh, bus strips, and that has a single strip of metal which provides power from one end to the other on both sides, and these rails are used to supply power to any of the various rows on the breadboard. On this particular breadboard you can see that the rows are numbered by fives, and the columns there are uh, lettered A, B, C, D, E and the other side is F, G, H, I, J. And you can see this deep channel. This channel is convenient for your integrated circuits. It can straddle the channel there. You plug them in on either side without connecting the two sides. So you'll see breadboards come in different shapes and sizes. Uh, they also have tabs on the side here where you can connect them and you see the slots on the other side. If I had two or three of these, I could connect them like that and the bottom of it have uh, there's a sticky pad you can rip that off and stick it on the surface this is another example of a different configuration of a breadboard it's basically four of these breadboards together they're attached to this metal plate here on this breadboard I have posts up here which I can attach uh, my power source which in this case is a 9 volt battery and you got your ground down here I've got them attached here because I just have one power source attached to it but uh, this is another example. You've got your rails over here, over here, your rails in the middle. Very convenient for uh, big projects. This is a 5E breadboard. I got it as, uh, in, a, in an educational kit. This would be your connector. This has the metal piece that connects these five holes. Each one of these has five holes which is connected and you can basically put them anywhere on this plastic base and create whatever you want to Create. It's just a different uh, type of breadboard. You can see how I've snapped all this stuff in there. I can basically shift these wires around to any configuration that I want. It's actually pretty neat. And this pattern here that you see in the LEDs is an Arduino pattern that was included uh, with the educational kit. This picture of the breadboard is the one I have and it helps you see how the metal strips are laid. Uh, along the breadboard connecting the holes so um, your rows here your five holes are connected and then like I said your uh, your long rails are uh, are connected by one uh, long strip of metal the second part of this lesson is about the LED this is a three millimeter LED and the three millimeter just refers to the diameter of the LED this is kinda like your midsize um, there's also 10 millimeter LED this one's kinda bent a little bit but you can see how it's much bigger and then we have the smaller three millimeter LED so three five and then ten which is bent so one thing to know about the LEDs is the polarity of the, the pins before you use it otherwise you it will not light up so in order to get your LED to light up you're gonna to have to know which pin is positive and which one is negative or which one goes into your ground connection the uh, pin that is the longest is typically your positive pin that's one way to tell. Another way to tell is that 
on the negative side where the negative pin is, you see you want to see that rim is flat right there as I turn it up there where the uh, the base of the LED is. You can see that that is flat. And another way to tell would be just to connect it to a multimeter. You will always want to use a resistor between your power supply and the LED. Otherwise, you will supply too much current to your LED and burn it out. It'll go out immediately. So the next thing we have here are resistors. And they often come labeled and taped together like you see here. As the name implies, the resistors resist the amount of electricity that flows from one end to the other. As you can see here, resistors come in different values, and the higher the value, the more it will resist the flow of electricity. Here we have 100, there we have uh, 2,000, and there we have 100,000. So the unit of resistance is called the ohm, and it is uh, what I've drawn there. Ohm is indicated by the Greek letter omega, and each one of these values, for instance, is 100K, that's 100,000 ohm. 1M is 1 million ohms, 2K is 2,000 ohm, 330 is 330 ohm, 100, and then, you know, and so forth. So in this lesson, we're going to use the 220 ohm, the 1K ohm, and the 10K ohm resistors to show uh, different brightness levels of the 5 millimeter LED. But as you can see, they look, they all look the same, but as you take a closer look here, they have different colored stripes on them that is an indicator of uh, what their value is. For me, unless I do this, I cannot see the stripes. I can't determine whether something is yellow or gold or brown or black. It all just kind of blends in together. So what I do is I connect it to my multimeter. And another way to tell the value of a resistor is just to connect it to your multimeter. I'm going to turn it up to the ohm setting and this is the 2000 ohm which I'm getting on here 1.981 close enough as you can see it is 2000 I just connect the multimeter at opposite ends of the resistor so now would be a good time to say that there is no positive or negative lead on a resistor there is no polarity on a resistor, so you don't have to worry about which side is positive and which is negative. So if your vision is stellar, you can use this uh, color diagram here to determine what the value is of the resistor. As you can see, the top has a four band code, and the yellow corresponds with a four, that's your first digit. Your second digit is purple, that's a seven, and there is no third digit and then the, the fourth is your multiplier, and that appears to be orange, which is a thousand. And then the last one is your tolerance. So if you look up at the top, it shows you that it's a 47,000 ohm. If you look at the bottom one, that's a five band code. And likewise, those colors correspond with the numbers and turns out to be a 51,000 ohm resistor. So here we have our three five millimeter LEDs and they are connected. Each one is connected to a different value resistor. If you remember, we have a 1000, well, we have a 220 ohm, a 1000 ohm and a 10,000 ohm resistor. And here we have a battery pack that's a three volt battery pack. So we're using that as our power supply. When I turn it on, you can tell immediately which resistor is the higher value and which resistor is the lower value based on what we know about resistors. The higher the value of the resistor, the more electricity will be resisted, will be held back. You can tell right away which one is the 220. This is the 220 ohm resistor. This is the 1000 ohm resistor. And this is the 10,000. It's barely lit up. And as you can see, the 220 ohm resistor is burning bright. And this is kind of in between. I know on the camera these two look the same, but uh, this one's about half as bright as that one. Or at least it appears to be. And this one's barely lit up. 
the Mega 2560 board can be used as just a simple power source and that's what I've done here I have plugged the positive uh, jumper cable into the 5 volt and then the negative into the ground as you can see there and I will plug the positive uh, wire here into the positive strip there I will plug the uh, ground wire into the ground strip and then I'll plug my board in and here my board just acts as a simple 5 volt supply you can see that the 220 volt is actually burning brighter because this is 5 volt whereas before I was using 3 from a battery pack and here the 1000 ohm resistor is burning a little bit brighter but not quite as bright as the 220 and then here the 10,000 ohm resistor is burning a little bit brighter than before but not quite as bright as that so you can see 10,000, 1,000 and 220 ohm resistors and this is simply just plugged into my board as a power supply very convenient so as you can see here you've got the positive pin of the LED plugged into the same row here as the resistor I put it right in front of the resistor and the same row as the resistor and the other pin from the resistor the other leg of the resistor is plugged into the positive rail here the negative leg from the LED is plugged into the ground rail right here the negative otherwise it'll receive too much electricity and it will burn out and I can remove the positive lead here and I can tap it against any of the resistors that are plugged into the positive rail here and they will all come on they all come on there they all come on there and they all come on there as you can see electricity should always flow through the resistor before it reaches your LED to prevent burnout so that's lesson three see you soon for lesson four